<laughs> Don't say what you were Oh, my God, we're live. Straight in. Listen, no, no this Man. beard's going nowhere. Don't you worry. There's not enough people at Casino to hold me down and shave my beard. <laughs> it could never happen. It could never. I'd have to watch Derek, but... If anybody pulls, I'm not worried about anybody else. I won't call it an assassination attempt, but, you know, like you ran into the shop with one of those battery-powered razors, and you snuck up on Johnny, and you went right down the middle. I, I can't be snuck up on. It's not even possible. <laughs> Imagine if people, like, this became a real thing, though. It got bad. Be some, like, <laughs> be some hurt feelings. People coming at you. And hurt bodies. <laughs> all no take plan. Is one to get no you, plan Johnny. With one to get you. And then the beard's gone. we got to start all over. Luckily, I can grow this beard in two days. <laughs> you think, you Jonathan's think full, full of himself this morning. Full of, love full it. of it. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, good morning. I'm with Jenner. Good morning. All Every hoss you. needs his beard. That's true. Every hoss needs his beard. Every hoss needs a beard. That would be great. We can make a version of that. Every cowboy. Um, it's a sad, sad song. I, I, that's another one I've had to play a lot live that I, I don't really necessarily ever want to do again. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'll be honest, a lot of that stuff missed me completely. Yeah. Oh no, you, you, you know, bon you know. Jovi, Bon Jovi to Poison to the whole nine. <laughs> you guys have the best comments. They just make me laugh. And Sometimes I get, I get a... <laughs> you mean a Colorado Kool-Aid. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, no, shaving, shaving is not a, shaving's just not, it's not efficient. You're wasting your life away, shaving, standing in the mirror. Jen Rice said, dread songs to play live, Sean and Jonathan. Whew. Give me three. I feel like that's easier than picking one. Give me three. Give me three. Uh, well, they, like, we'll hear them and they hit me. I See, I don't mind playing that. Yeah. I'm so redneck that I love playing Give Me Three Steps. <laughs> Every time I play that little, nah, nah, and the, everybody in the bar goes, yeah, hell yeah. I just, I get excited. I just, um, you know. I, I will say this. Here's, here's my disclaimer, right? Like, I say right now, like, every rose that I don't really want to play again. Wagon Will, I never really want to play again. Mm -hmm. um, but you're a liar. If you say that you play those songs and there's 500 people packed into a little bar and they all get, they're all yelling and you're having fun and you're jamming on it, that's fun. I don't care. Like, I don't want to sit here and just play it right now. But, you know, if we got a, if we got a packed, yeah. a packed bar, like I had one of my memories, one of the little, uh, you know, if you've been to Nashville, you know how little bars are like narrow and kind of tiny. But I mean, I used to have these pictures of, you know, they'll pop up my memories and it'll just be people I mean you know can't move can't get to the bar and it was just super fun and I don't care if you're playing wagon wheel if you're playing whatever it was it was just a good time so with that disclaimer mm -hmm. yeah um wagon I mean wheel. I don't even you know people ask for free bird and sometimes I feel obliged to play it for like lots of money but even that kind of gets yeah but old. you you do something special with free bird you play it well. P play, play it, play it like they're all like sort of, kind of. Oh God, Derek, that was cool. the Matrix just happened. That was um, awesome. Oh yeah, baby. Whoa. But it's it's a good question though. I mean, I don't know. Do you have songs that you just never want to play again? Yes, yes. I was thinking of that. Uh, the all right. Oh, I got a good thought. Keep going. Keep going. The, I got a good thought. The cranberry zombie. Zombie. I absolutely zombie. Zombie. Ever, ever want to play again? I'm like so over it. Anytime I've been, anytime I've been like brought on stage, it's like let's play zombie. Let's do. Well, zombie. some of those songs what? happen not even because it's just because they're the same four chords or three chords. Yes. And it's like anybody can do. It. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it becomes it's like an like and that's I what get happens. That, right? Wagon wheel's the same way, right? It's yes. the same four chords. Yeah. You know, you skip the E minor every other time. Oh my God! But yeah. um, some of the songs that I hate playing, I just realized. You remember my story about playing with the guy and then the band was called like. The band was called like effing nuts or something weird, what? and like uh, it was a horrible experience. But <laughs> it, that ruined that long descent. We had to play that song "Long Descent" uh, by the Counting Crows. Yeah, and you're like, I which whatever. Know. It's like you're like, oh my god. But anyways, I never want to play that song again because it reminds me of that night. So like some some of them to me are like tied to Moments. experiences, yeah. not necessarily that I've overplayed a song. I, I got a bit of that, you know, because my uh, band I was in, the girl was like, 
that song was done primarily because, you know, oh, I'm amazing. It's like, okay, yeah, we're all amazing, right? Uh, and then we had to play it so many times that I just got to the point that I was like, all right. Well, it wasn't that, even a lot, lot. It was enough for me to be annoyed by that song completely. And then also the fact that that Bad Wolves band or whatever did that cover that exploded a few years back and the song was everywhere all over again. Death Ray Cat, you are more than welcome. I am glad to see you. Glad you're doing well. Um, I got one other one, too. Nizo Dizo. What is that? Nizo Dizo. Yes, he should shave his beard and stop saying stupid crap that helps no one. Oh, I see that's you've been scary. talking to my wife. Um, actually, she loves my beard, so she wouldn't even say that. But she'd probably agree with the other part. Imagine um, being that angry at somebody that you've probably never met before. Thanks for your positivity. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but but <laughs> Nizo Dizo, Anyways. you got um, to lighten up, dog. Lighten up. That's like a bad way to live. Just relax. Yeah, lighten up. Just relax. Calm down. There's like um, more to life than being cranky. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm, you know, I wasn't super Jack aware ass. that we were, we were helping anyone. Anyway, um, smells like Teen Spirit's my other one, and here's why. Shave it if you can get $500 in what support for cause. I feel like $500 is not, that's not that much. I mean, we could, we should aim higher than that. That's scary. You know, anyways. We, um, uh, yeah, no, it smells like Teen Spirit, and here's why. Because no one should play that song. Like, you can't do it justice. I've yet to see anybody do it justice. Bam, bam, yeah, well, that's right. Like, like there are some songs like that that, yeah, you I've should never just leave seen it anyone. Like, I, you know, and I, I wish somebody would, but, like, I've never seen anyone do it justice. That's a really funny point because we all, like, kind of tout that as, oh, Nirvana is also simple, and it's such a simple song, right. and everybody learns it, like, in the beginning. But it, yeah. the moving parts live... Nah, yeah, I've never seen anybody just crush it. I think it's more like a vocal thing, too. Like, the guitar-wise, fine. You know, you sure. see people who are way too concentrated on the strumming pattern. I'm like, relax. Like, it's they're punk rock. Yeah, they're like, uh, 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 uh. I'm like, the Dude. accent's actually <laughs> on the of uh, four or whatever. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's like, like, well, okay. You know, fine. I mean, sure. It, but, um, yeah. yeah. No. Nah. That's my thing. Um, so know? I'm with you on that. That, that, is, that is funny. I do see sometimes covers, and I'm like, oh, I just wish, wish you wouldn't do this, baby. Yeah. Um, well, just I like, probably do some of those. I'm sure people come see us sometimes. And would, like, would you consider any songs uncoverable? Like, no matter how many times you, either you personally have tried or other people have tried, there's no way? No, because I feel like every time you think that, you see some, like, mind-blowing cover of a song, even if it's online or something. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. saying you see, go out and see it live, but yeah. occasionally. I mean, I think sometimes that's what gets me when I find new, like, people on YouTube. And I'm like, dang. Like, like uh, Larkin Poe is a really good example of that. Yeah. They do some amazing, just the two guitar, like this, you know, she's playing live steel and the other sister's playing guitar and singing and yeah. fantastic, you know. Um, so I, some songs are probably, you should probably either totally do your own version yeah. or or you got to have enough pieces in the band to like do it, nail it. You know, I get that. it's hard to half half measure on so, some songs you can just kind of do right. Knocking on heaven's door. Probably one some people never want to play again. But you know what I mean? It's I the same it's the same three or four chords, right? Yeah. You can just do it. There's yeah. enough versions of it, it doesn't matter. Right? Absolutely not, Jonathan. But there's some songs that you can't do them half measures. You just gotta Yeah. Now here's a great here's a great um uh know the club, read the crowd. Like that is a pro tip right there. Cause my guys and my trio, I think sometimes I um well, they've grown to like it, but I don't ever have a set list. I just have a master list, and then I call random things, and sometimes we do random things that aren't on the master list because I know they're simple, and the people will get into it, or they maybe are asking for something, and I'll just go into stuff. But, I mean, yeah, if you can do that, man, you can get a crowd. You can get them going. But if you just are, like, dead set on here's where we play, and, I mean, obviously it's different if it's a ticketed show and it's your show and you're doing originals. But if you're a cover band, like a bar band kind of thing, um, or that's the that's the, what you're doing. Yeah, you just gotta do it. Can't half-ass Steely Dan. Well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to. I've after. seen it done. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, I've told this story before, probably on here, but I used to go to this blues jam when I was young, and I was first figuring everything out, and I'd always get put in this group with this dude that wanted to play a Steely Dan song, and I'm like, it's a blues jam. Like half of us can barely play like twelve the twelve bar thing. Like we're not doing Steely Dan, but we would all. Uh, it was it was rough. I mean, hey. rough. Uh, somebody wanted to uh, put in this in there, and I'll let you know because I saw the comment fly by. Um, 
Jonathan Robinson is the voice of reason at Casino Guitars. <laughs> You're not far <laughs> off, actually. Sometimes I am. I think the, the other three of us were very much uh, of extremes. <laughs> And like Sometimes. not of the extremes like that are out of this world, just like of the oh, extremes, out of like just <laughs> these extremists here. <laughs> well, Derek's like, I like chocolate cake, and I'm like, hell no, I like vanilla ice cream. How dare you? <laughs> That's just how we are. That's and true. Baxter, he's an evil mastermind. He hides it. He hides it well. <laughs> it's all a ploy. <laughs> it's all a ploy. And then there's little old me. Just I am what no, you. No, no, you you're the voice. You're then Paul. There's me. You're Paul. Paul. You can see what is and what was. The Kwisatz Haderach. <laughs> <laughs> Abomination. That's um, right. D Denny says, just do whatever song you want to do and make it your own. And I, I am a big fan of making songs your I own. I do agree with that. Um, and I think I would enjoy playing Zombie if that's how we ever played it. But it was always a... It was always a cluster of like, oh. Well, there's some songs like that, like uh, that you can do. We do some old songs that I would think I would never want to hear, but I do them kind of like rock up and bluesy, and I think I think they're fun, and the yeah. crowd always seems to like them. But I don't know, it just makes makes well, me happy. We've been talking about uh, everybody wants to rule the world. That's a song you could rock up, dude. Woo, hot. Sean's been playing that one lately. I have been. Um, it's <laughs> fun though, with a rock guitar, like really loud. <laughs> Ned says I'm the casino employee. He'd most like to tickle. I'm, I will say oh, I have, that I have, he would most. I was like, like you're most likely to go and tickle people. I see that now. Yeah, that he's most likely to tickle. Jonathan is. If you met Jonathan in person, you'd probably be like, oh no. <laughs> it was said by another employee, and I won't say who it was. They they refrained. I'm and very said, sweet. What did he say? He's like, why would anybody want to mess with Jonathan? Do they want to die? So, so it's very strange. Wants to see. Oh yes, dude. Who wants yes. To see Do it. Jesus. The Jonathan No Beard. Now I know what Derek's been over there doing. Yes, baby. You Johnny son Rob, of a No Tell Beard. Us in the comments if you're ready. For Are you it. ready? We'll get a vote. Do you want to see Jonathan Beardless? Man. We've got the deep to. cuts. What which one is this, Derek? I can only imagine which one you Give me up. I'm rolling yeah, Puka Shell. We've got a couple Jesus. good ones coming up. All right, are you ready, guys? Lord help me. <laughs> The Lord help me. You're gonna about to see why I will never shave. Shell, You're gonna see Here the evidence, go. the the best argument for why Jonathan needs to keep his beard. Uh, I'm on, with Rob. Man. I'm probably cutting it too much already. Flip flops and jeans. God. Here we go. God. Give Ooh, me maybe cheese. That was a fun Les Paul yesterday. That was good times. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Short Sex. Beard, Jonathan. All right, you're ready. Jesus. Now here's the real one. Here's the real Dude, one. Dude, this is hot. There we Jonathan, go. there we go. That was Mr. that was a million years ago. Is that I know that we had a beard for forty years. Now, that, this is she was one of my students. She was great. The truest no beard, Jonathan. That was when I used to teach like seventy students a week because I hated myself. There we go. Soul oh, patch, God. Johnny. Soul patch, Johnny. I just want to fly, Johnny. <laughs> I just want to fly. That was God. Sugar Ray, oh. Johnny. Don't worry, oh. Sean. You're next, buddy. Oh. You're next. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share this. Me. This will let you guys know on the live stream here that I do actually love all y'all uh, because this is some stuff you just don't share. My Facebook, the other day I logged into it to look at the marketplace, and you know how it shows, like, uh, do you want to repost this post from 12 oh, yeah. years ago? <laughs> 12 years ago, no. Sean was saying, <laughs> it's I'm really embarrassing. It's bad. It's like, I don't know if I'm in the friend zone, but it feels like it. I posted that to public Facebook. Dude, there's some things I look back that I posted, like back when Facebook was sort of seemed new, and you would just you would see these catchphrases, and there there are no pictures, no anything, no, nothing, just just this stupid just sentence. This stupid sentence. And I'd be like, I, I. that is exactly how I felt. I was like, you idiot. They, I, you all I can man. say when I see them, I try to think, okay, John, uh, I can At least this. you don't. Post these things now, because oh, some people yes. keep posting that stuff. Um, uh, you know, Beyblade years, Sean. I was Listen. more of a Yu-Gi-Oh kid. Um, I can only imagine what photos Derek has found because my whole childhood is basically on Facebook. I I kind of love. Um, that's so weird to me too, because it just didn't exist when I was a kid. I love the, the Beyblades. Funny thing is, Ten years ago, Sean was a, like a baby. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that's what I mean. Like whenever I say twelve years, I was like in middle school posting. That's about what I'm saying. Like we didn't even, we didn't know you. Um, I. I'm liking Mayor McCheese more and more. The man's full of wisdom. You he says, say, "You're an incredibly handsome." <laughs> well, Cheers Mayor to you, Mayor. I think you could teach Jonathan's <laughs> wife a thing or two. 
<laughs> Let her know how to talk to a man. My chin is probably melted by now. It's all, you know, my five chins. I'm, you know. You it's haven't bad. seen that thing so long, dude. The sun, the sun's rays have not touched your chin. My ki- kids think that's hilarious. They're always like, "Do you have a chin, Dad?" I'm like, no. no. I, t- I had him going the other day. I told him I had a horrible chin accident that I lost my chin, <laughs> and that's why I have a beard and would never shave. <laughs> and my my daughter is pretty gullible, and she was like, "Oh my God, this is horrible. Daddy has no chin." <laughs> <laughs> All right, basically. Um, you when you got balls like these. these. Oh, no. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, We're just no. going down memory lane with everybody here. Why not? <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here's Sean. I can't, I'm pretty excited about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sean. no. Oh, that's not fair. You're cute and young. I Everybody's know. cute when they're he a kid. He super young. <laughs> Man, this is probably, this was five years ago. <laughs> that is an Harry Potter. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's my cousin's graduation. <laughs> is that Harry Potter you're with? Basically. It looks like Harry Potter. That's the one that oh. rides bulls now. And has The great thing is you look like, basically, that's just you shrunk down. Like, that's what oh, I yeah. imagine young Sean to be. Yeah, me tiny. Jeans into your boots. That's me and my mom. In Sean's mom is very sweet. We love, we love Sean's right. mom here. You guys, you guys ready for, for some Derek? <laughs> yes. I, I, I do need to see I'll, a Sean with the headband at one well. point. I need, uh, I need to see a Sean with the headband. Oh, there's a really bad blonde-haired Sean with the headband on the Facebook. You can find that. It was rough. I didn't want to give everything away. Oh, you can, you can let it rip, dog. <laughs> was, it, was there a Sean Chubby era? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you were close to it. You I got real close. You really? Really? There was a phase right around there. No. You bump awesome. left. You bump gonna, right. I wasn't gonna go there. Listen, as a you wearer of husky I jeans, know. a proud, proud husky jeans I member. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't imagine Sean in the husky section. I don't know. <laughs> People are on the like. Why are these boys talking about this? It this is not guitars. It was like I was huge. It was just more like I was. You could tell. It was. You know, it was a little. Uh, you know, it's like, hey, kid. Uh, Listen, I was husky, but I was. Agile. I can I can move, you know. You really think you need the bacon cheese fries, <laughs> kids? <laughs> oh my God! I know there's some D numbers coming, Derek. He was. Uh, I I won't say that he could have looked like he would have been in the Backstreet Boys necessarily, but he had some frosted tip action, <laughs> and I'm hoping. That's oh my a God! Coming across. Husky Bugle Boy jeans. That is so many memories for me right there. Husky Bugle Boys. Okay. Yeah. I got an idea. What if? Was, all right, here we what go. if we all found the clothing that we wore at the most oh ironic God. moment. Like we look back on, we're like, God, never again. And you dress like that just for one video. I, okay, listen, I got, I got. This is, this is, this is confessional, right? So, like, you know, I grew up pretty rural, pretty small town, right? So then I go down to Charleston for college, you know, and cut my hair all short and all that, that, that picture you saw. And there was an old navy, you know, in a mall, and I was like, oh my, I'd go to the mall and just be like, damn, all these stores inside connected. It's so weird, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was like more than my mind could handle. And I would just, I man, I'd buy so much junk from Old Navy. And now your, I look back and I was, I'm a little ashamed. What was your but favorite store in the mall? I, I, I thought Old, Old Navy, Navy was amazing. I don't know, I liked American Eagle too, but it was a little expensive. Y'all store. already know where the hell I went. You know? I was in the Hot Topic. Every I weekend. liked Hot Topic. I just couldn't, I couldn't pull it off. Oh, anymore. dude, I had ombre skinny jeans. They went from black to blue. I'm not making this shit up. That was a different time, though. I had know? a My Little Pony seat belt belt. People are in for a weird live stream today. That's dude, Jinko. Jinko. Okay. I always wanted Jinkos, but I don't know if I've ever had any. The singer um, in one of my bands wore Jinko jeans to shows. <laughs> like the big ones, my buddy, I, I, my buddy Josh watches these sometimes. Josh Mission, he used to have the hugest ones. He was my um, one of my sweet mates in college. And dude, did had y'all really ones. think they were cool back then? Were y'all like these are sick? No, nah, I mean you had to be like in a particular, like you know, sort of the beginnings of like the goth thing, or like you know, like super skater. You know what I mean? Like, I see what you're saying. You know okay. what I mean? Like Josh was always cool. It wasn't like everybody was wearing these pants. No, that's what no, I was gonna say. No. I was like, it was, were no, they, it was a little bit. Were they ridiculed edgy. then? Or were they like, oh, it's I don't on think the so. Edge. I no. think it was kind of like some of them were ridiculous. Like some of the the oh, things were so big, you like you were wearing a giant skirt. You know what yeah. I mean? Like just and it covered your shoes and like the edge of your little Chuck Taylors would stick out. <laughs> but like I said, I never I never had those. My dad would have probably beaten me if he'd seen that. Um, but uh, you know, <sighs> what are you gonna do? All right, let's see. Should I do one one normal picture of Derek in the golden it. era? Let's see it. I want to. I want to see those frosted tips, baby. The frosty ones. and they need the tips. I can't wait. It's like I never had that. It's like a Justin Timberlake if he was more like a man, you know. I call it. I call it the Ryan Gosling era. Just as handsome. Yeah. Let me get to it. As for old Baxter photos, 
Oh, I'm going down many. the old uh, Baxter memory lane. It's hard to find old photos of Baxter. And I mean, like, embarrassingly old. Listen, someone said on here that we need to... Uh, oh, I would like to see Derek and Bessie train, too, actually. That's a good... That's a good okay, I, I've got There's some, some of those, right? S someone was saying that we should... Post we were talking oh. about before this that we should have like a giant Google Hangouts with all you dudes in the comments that come to the live stream because that would be hilarious. Um, that would be fun to do it only on Saturday or something. I think it'd be dope. But I would love to do that. Okay, all right, you guys want to see some <laughs> Jay Ryan had brought clothes in like twenty years. I, well, there is a point. There was a weird point in your life. I don't know if you feel like you've reached this yet, Sean. I'm, where you, I'm in it. Yeah. You settle into your. Like the clothes you're gonna wear. Well, <laughs> that's kind of it. Well, I feel like I'm in. You know, I've been in that for. A well, long time. I'm in it, and it's like I'm fighting to make sure that I stay out of it. But also, I'm too poor to like just go and like dump money into clothes. But I also time. think there's a weird thing when you hit a certain age and you start wearing these weird trendy. It'd be like if I had like super skinny jeans. Do you know what I mean? Like I wear like the slim. You know what I mean? But like you yeah. can't. You hit a point where you don't need to do the weird trendy styles anymore. Uh, you need to be like classically. Yeah. You know. Well, and I, I view I, I view outfits. Like, I'm a big believer in like clothing and fashion as like almost like armor. Like whatever you put on, if you feel confident in it, then you're good to go. Well, I, I try to buy stuff that like I just know will last me forever. Oh. Sort of, if I can afford it. You just but, man, you ain't got no military greens, dog. I, know, I can get you one of these. Five bucks. You like that? I, I do kind of. Like I'm not that, making actually. this it up. Is this sweet. is a military shirt. Is it surplus? Is it, yeah. just, this is the real deal. Maybe I, that's it. It's got look, Derek, yellow tag and all. Dude. Derek's like you dumb, you know. <laughs> like you idiot. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah, baby. I'm ready, Derek. Come on. Mayor McCheese. <laughs> Comrade. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. I don't know how we got on this. Arthur's saying he thought this was a guitar for him. Well, I mean, it sort of is, Arthur. We're just horribly off track. Danny DeVito in skinny jeans was one of the funniest things ever. It was... It yeah, was pretty fantastic. Okay. Do I, where, are, are we still getting uh, getting, getting Derek picks? Did I miss them? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to trying to get them in a the right order. Once we see Derek's picks, we'll talk about guitars. Do we need to talk about our, our slash guitar from yesterday? I think we talk a little bit about some All slash right. action. Um, I got I got some hot uh, topics in mind. There we go, Jen or I. We do. We, this is fun. We have fun guitars are fun. All right, here's we one. Fun. We have fun. From we right are after. Uh, here we go. This is, uh, I'll start with college and work my way forward. Did y'all yeah. know I had a rap album? I I didn't know what? that. What? He showed me this. It's yep. it's hilarious. I hope we have All the right. cover. I'm I want to hear it. I want to live stream it. Cover. Yes, dude. Holy. This is amazing. D Money Love Bone. Welcome to the this Bone This is the greatest Star. thing I've ever seen. Does that fit, say featuring Little G-Ball? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! And does that say "bark like a dog, <laughs> dog for me"? Bark like a dog for me. And yeah. somebody gonna die tonight with a yep. two? Yep. Oh my God! <laughs> Look how attractive Derek could have been in the friggin' Backstreet Boys. I told right, you. So, yeah. Johnny, since you said how attractive I am, you are. You get that. Well, then there's, then there's that. I mean, it happens to all of us. 2004. You know. 2004. All right. He's like, my life. I should not have released that album. What the fuck is your this one? <laughs> what? <laughs> this one, let's see if we can chug this milk. That is disgusting. Right. So, so Sean wanted to see my In the Backstreet Boys era. In the Backstreet Boys era. Here you go. There it is, baby. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Frosted, you could, frosted, You could frosted. totally have been. Look how good he looks. Look and at his a face. slick, I'll say a slick Steve right there hanging that out. That is a, I, it Look took me a minute to realize Look that was him. Steve. Look at he him. He looks like Tony Soprano lost 200 pounds, dude. Look at him. <laughs> All right. He's well, ready. A young Ryan Gosling, dude. some might say. There, <laughs> the some, young Gosling is in the building. There's my, the, the, Man. the army era. That's right. Leading men in war. Look at that. Now that's cool. <laughs> Derek, it was go, like, boys. I love it. Derek's got the coolest old pics. I mean, he is picking the pictures, to be fair. But that he's great. got the coolest ones. We, uh, I we think can't. We've gone way off track. It's already. perfect, it's though. Funny. This is great. This is what this is about. You guys are like our little family. And yeah, well, it is I, I love. I, I love me. So I was talking to the Mighty Woodrow. Yep. Yesterday, yep, I'm ready. And we were talking about the live stream and how the hot takes and different conversations that we get into are just fun. And I was like, they are you know fun, man. man. It's just like the world is wide, and it's cool to talk to people. We sat there and had a whole conversation about Led Zeppelin and you know Aerosmith and all kinds of different stuff. It was funny. 
back to talking about the doors. We got, we got, I meant to wear it today. Uh, our buddy Ben yeah. sent us doors and uh, who shirts for the, for the whole shop and for everyone. I mean, that's like five people, but still, he sent them to us all. And uh, I've been promising to listen. And I, you know, I, I'm coming around on the doors. We're I'm starting disgusted. to see it. You know, um, I'm I, coming around. Well, here's what I think, too. We talked about the Saturday live stream stuff or whatever, right? At whatever point we do this, I think maybe we have a record picked out. We listen to it, dissect it, and discuss it. And the only problem with that is, like, obviously we'll get demonetized on it, but I don't care. I, that's just fun. Well, yeah, as long as it we don't monetize matter. it, it doesn't yeah, matter, right? Exactly. Like, we can still do it. Um, I think we just I think back, that's just kind of fun. Listen to the record, critique it while we're going through, and get drunk. What's, what's more to do? Why not? We could do it where we did our little 250 list over there. Yes. A listening party. I like it. I also think we should listen to Derek's rap album that way. You can't John, say you had a rap is album. There a, uh, are there photos of your first guitar on Facebook? Um, and Sean, are there photos of your first guitar? Not on there Facebook, but, but I have some. I was just thinking, like, Find it'd be... Them. We're all going to show our first let, guitars. Let's, I, well, I was thinking... I, it's funny you say that, because I was thinking from these pictures. Like, I have... A high school picture, you know, the little dumb pictures that make you take, and they're like, you can bring something, I brought a guitar. <laughs> um, we, we should all do that and have, you know. Johnny, did your senior old. photos, did you take pictures with your guitar? That's what I'm talking about, yeah, my senior yeah, photos. I have a senior yeah. photo yeah. with my guitars. The Paul, Gibson the Paul. I mean, rather that than doing that. Dirty Fingers pickups. Can we just, I didn't realize that was going to be the first thing that would pop up. That's funny. That is cool. That's a good photo. Sean's got his Facebook pulled up over here. We're looking at. That's a great photo. Things. What is that? That's oh. me as a milestone about a year ago. <laughs> that's too cool. That looks that's too great. Cool. Yeah, that's way too cool. Yeah, that's I too do cool. have the. It almost looked like you were playing a Silver Sky for a minute, though. Ugh. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> Should I pull up Baxter? Who wants to see old Baxter? You find some old Baxter. I, oh, my friend William Caswell. That's the photo. Basic struggle. Oh, my That's lord. Rough. <laughs> Let me find. I got Look my first photo. Funny today, I guess. Yep. Oh yeah. Hello, everyone. This is this is my first guitar photo. Oh, that's your first guitar. What is that? Like an old Fender acoustic? CD sixty. Thank you. Told me that before. Yeah. I, I'm sure that I've got some somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm sure I've got some somewhere. You do look very Justin Bieber in that one. Oh, definitely. It's With bad. the hair, you got the swoopy little hair bangs. Um, you know. <laughs> Mary Chi says, You ain't cool if you didn't take your guitar to senior picks. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. I mean, it was, it is, it was true, actually. Um, yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? But, yeah, anyways. True. Um, do you still have, that is actually, so do you guys still have your first guitar? Uh, yes. I gave that acoustic to my brother and then that blue guitar I still have. I don't, ha I don't have mine. I kind of wish I did have mine. Uh, Sean McKenzie remembers my first one was a black and white Squire Strap. So, um, mine but yeah. Mine was a West Tone Electra that I tried to paint Sparkle Paisley. Do you have it though? It is in my garage. Yes. I should bring it in. It's no pickups, no nothing. It's been rained on. But my first acoustic is my Lair Bay, and I do have pictures of that, playing yeah. that in college. I am shocked that Baxter does not have his first guitar. Like, that is shocking to me. I get it when he told me the story, like his parents were like, you got to sell it, and to, you know. Yeah. That makes, that tracks, but I just, Baxter keeps things, you know what I mean? I think, um, I feel like he, well, he's got that bass, and I think he technically thinks of that as like his first His first guitar. Thing. Yeah. All right. But I don't know, you know, it doesn't, it's not like the guitar thing, you know, completely different. Dude, Ned says his first electric was also a West Tone Electra. That's there you go. You guys are guitar guitar buddies, guitar brothers. <laughs> Bodega um, Baxter. I wish, I wish there was Bodega Baxter. That'd be great. <laughs> Baxter, surprisingly, as much as, like, it's hard to find an embarrassing photo. He doesn't well, have, like, phases. Oh, you guys. Don't you worry. Here we go. Sean, don't you worry. I like I what I'm hearing. <laughs> Here we go. This will be a good one. All right. <laughs> Dry says, who here started on acoustic to appeal to the ladies, compensating for how awkward you were? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. And our hands up. No shame. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> That's far newer. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> huh. Well, there you go. That's pretty old. That's a 2000... Nine photo. I was gonna say that's him. That's him and T though. <laughs> right I don't know who the hell. Who's he supposed Up, to be? Upstanding. Uh, Southern Pines is the most upstanding couple right there. Yeah. Right there. Just so you know. 
Um, the best and brightest. Huh? <laughs> Zane says that was last week. It probably could have been last week, actually. Um, Ned said it. <laughs> I was staying. I was staying quiet. He's probably one. watching right now. I stand in solidarity, my brother. Shalom. Here's <laughs> another one. Since we're going back to our young photos. Let's see here. Oh God. I mean, everybody's got to get in on it, so don't you worry. <laughs> 79 PVT 45. <laughs> James and Baxter. James. Man, Lola. oh, man. That's high school James. Ladies that shirt's a little too sheer for me. I don't know if that's a shirt. Is that a blouse? I think it is a blouse. Um, I think it's part of I think, I think you, would, shirt. you would call that. Man, you can really see the nipples in that I was going to say, that's very... <laughs> man. <laughs> man. We're going down memory lane here, folks. I didn't know we were doing this today. It's checking, taking a turn. You do one clickbait title. And this is where it leads Ned you. Ned said that's a tuxedo shirt. I wouldn't know about those. I things. wouldn't know either. The old penguin suit. There's a lot of ruffles though. There's too many ruffles for me. It's a lot of ruffles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mason, you should. You, we there were. I don't know if you were here, Mason, but there, there, Derek showed some naked faced pictures, bald faced. I'd like to call it. Um, it's. <laughs> It's not good for anyone. Um, <laughs> Chad says, did they use that shirt in episode of Seinfeld? <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Amen. There you go. Well, let's talk, good times. Let's talk Gibson stuff. Gibson, no, yeah. Sean. No, no. <laughs> so these, that, my favorite, track. my favorite, I don't, you know, I don't typically read comments for, for videos that we put out, but but yesterday I read them once on the one and my favorite one word that was, uh, are these dumbasses demoing a guitar that they can't ever sell and won't ever sell? And I was like, well, yeah, that's sort of what we do. Um, because that's, I don't know why. It's just fun. Things that we're interested in. But yeah, so. We, we are. <laughs> we are. We are those dumbasses. Uh, whatever. Mean, yeah. You know. um, I just thought that was funny. But uh, all right, Sean. Talk us. Tell us. Oh, no, where I was going to say. Yeah. I, there's some comments on that video. I don't know what's wrong with people, man. <laughs> Jonathan's just playing a guitar. Leave him alone. Leave the boy alone. <laughs> I mean, most of the comments were pretty nice to me. They were. Oh, yeah. I love all the Johnny Love. And some it's some people like were a like, one um, to eight, you know? Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe I'll put out that your sharing version of uh, Sweet Child of Mine to the members. To the members? Only. Yeah. I yeah. can hear you playing that. We, 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 yeah, that the one yesterday, if you noticed that I had on different clothes, it's because we did a demo where I just I found a like backing track of Sweet Child of Mine and played it, but. Not the whole thing, but a little bit of it, and it got it got. Oh, he played. YouTube the whole thing. said no. And absolutely. Said. Well, they said you'll be demonetized. So <laughs> we did what we did yesterday, um, which honestly I thought was better and more fun. Um, but anyways, what are you gonna do? Um, yeah. So I mean, we can talk about just the guitar in general. It's pretty good. I like it. Oh, uh, what amp was I using again? The Tone Master Pro on the pre the the. The, you know, I know, it's sad, shameful, Sean. The, the Guns N' Roses uh, preset. I know. Do you I realize know. you have a reputation to uphold and you're over here telling people that you played through it to a Mr. Pro? It doesn't matter. When You, you just got to make it sing, Sean. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. How did you feel about the hotter pickups on Jack? I, actually, I really enjoyed the hotter. I mean, like, for, like, what... I was doing, like, there's something cool about those uh, pickups when the, the pinch harmonics just kind of jump out, you know? And it was natural, um, too. Like, you were, I feel like you were doing a lot of that, you know, almost, I'll say flawlessly. Like, it was just kind of happening. Like, it was like, boom, you know? Well, when you got that, when you got gain like that and that much, yeah, you can do them. I feel like you can do them. I was just, saying, just, just you were want. just on it. Um, I was like, Whoa. I honestly, it made me forget how much fun that is. And I can't, it makes me kind of want a guitar with hotter, like a little revved up. Supercharged kind it's of going thing. to the dark side, but I mean, that, I you feel know. like that's a good segue right into what we talked about Les Pauls and 335s nope. and even SGs earlier this morning about sitting down and playing these guitars. It's a little funky. I, I have decided I don't like Les Paul sitting down. It's tough. I mean, it's not that I don't like them, it's just there's a weird yeah. thing, right? Like, yeah. I don't know. I love them standing up, and I mean, it's not like I wouldn't sit around and play it, it's just when you get to the upper register. Throw us, throw us a Les Paul. Hey, you oh my that God. One. We'll talk through some of this. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, I generalize probably right. You probably got to do this thing to be able to get here. But then that's just weird for me, too. I don't know. Well, see, like, and I told you, my. There's a downward angle. See? Yeah. 
My workaround with that is doing like this, right? Yeah, and you it bring helps it back. if you got a chair like this. But you know, having my leg that way. Uh, your laptop down. Right, down. So people can see better. Or okay, might as well. But um, yeah. I mean, it's just I don't know. I think. Do you guys? <laughs> do you guys? <laughs> I think I, like I enjoy it. playing standing up more. I probably oh, yeah. play better standing up at this point I in my life. Yeah. Um, I think. All the but. stuff I do recording wise, like even last night, but back whenever we were doing stuff with Jose, everything standing up. I couldn't, I mean, like yeah. I could, but it felt weird to. There's a chair I sit in at home where I'm in sort of a weird posture that I just play a lot just because I'm sitting at home. I can play, you know, like I'm really comfortable that way, but. Um. Okay, here's an interesting one. It's wise to practice standing up. I think I went through a phase. I remember the first time I ever played a gig, or, or a gig is a very loose term, in front of people, let's say that. And, um, you know, the thing that everybody has happened to them, you can't play because you never practice stand up. So I, I remember I used to just walk around my house um, playing with the strap on, not plugged in just to get the feel. And now I feel like it doesn't matter. Like there was a point in my life probably where if I learned something sitting down, I needed to practice it standing up. But now if I learn, it just does, it all translates now. I feel like you hit a point where it all translates. But it is. If you're just getting started or you have only played sitting down and you're going out to play in front of people and you want to play standing up, yes, practice, practice standing up. Um, so if you guys, you, you notice we talked about this, like when you see friggin' uh, Uncle Larry, um, our buddy Tom Bukovac, he's always like, <laughs> I don't know how he does it. But um, a mean look on his face. But, but you know, I mean, most of his plan is in a studio. Um, now, okay, here's the thing, Mayor McCheese, you can't dance sitting down. Yeah, that right. I think there's something to. I remember one of my earliest times recording, being in a studio, and you know, I was, um, I play a really good take, and then I play a bad take, and then you know, the, one of the guys, one of the older guys there, he's like, hey, if you notice when you're rocking and moving, you're crushing it. When you try to sit super still. Yeah, you're almost kind of too, too There, There focused. is a, right, yeah. you know? Yeah, so. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> I like <laughs> says, joke's on you, I can't dance standing up. Hey, dancing horizontally is fun as well. It is. All good Horizontal things. Horizontal mambo. That's what Derek always likes to call it, or you know? Or pulpit. Um, <laughs> you dance like a white guy in Hitch. <laughs> Some great dancing comments going on right now in the, in the comment section, as always. But, and we were talking, I don't know, we, we were talking this morning about Let's Pauls, SGs, all this stuff. I was listening to, have you guys listened to, um, it's, I think it's Joe Matamasa with Chris Shiflett on the Shredded with Shifty show thing. Have you ever watched that one? I'm not. I need it's, to. It's really good because Joe Matamasa, he just knows so many things. And he's talking about how many years were the burst, you know, how 58 was like a split year. They were doing gold tops and then they switched to the burst. And then obviously 59, the neck got a little smaller. And then they made those same guitars the first three years of 1960. But I was saying to Sean, like, what must it have been like in the Gibson boardroom when they were like, you know what? Screw these Les Pauls. Let's make them with devil horns. <laughs> Forget the maple top. Still going to be the Les Paul standard. Like, what do you think? What do you think? I mean, the discussion was. Well, we and we talked a little bit about this. Today. It's a, it's a matter of um, materials, probably, right? It's a lot. You ain't got to do a maple top. You ain't got to do all this gluing and well, stuff. Well, it's it's you know. So I'm I'm sure there was that part that of it, right? right there. I mean, I know they felt like the strat was sort of taking some of their. Uh, what if I had just fallen and broken with this dark? <laughs> <laughs> I just leave. You never see me again. Um, yeah, I mean, it had to be mostly a matter of like, look how thin. Yes, teeny. So is it is it almost like Especially this is comparison. Gibson's Telecaster, and this is like Gibson's Strat? But it's weird, Why like cause, like Fender it, yeah. didn't stop making the Tele. You know what I mean? Exactly. And then they just were like, okay, here's the wave of the future. Here's the Strat, and here's the Tele. And what yeah. was interesting is, you know, in that first year. Yeah, the three pickups on them had kind of that melody maker, how it had that little gap between the fretboard. Uh -huh. yeah. I just think, like, when you think about here, Sean, will you throw that back over there for me? Yeah. When you think about the fact, like, how much different SG feels when you play it because of the way that, I mean, that just must have been really strange to guitar players, I think, when it first came out. Um, but, but Todd is right. They weren't big sellers. 
I, I think they were losing sales and they felt like it was a lot of it was to the Stratocaster. Um, so that was probably, yeah. I'm sure that was part of it. When, when I, you know, I like to think about it too, and we talk about this next door, it's weird to see that shape and think, like the Beatles aren't on Ed Sullivan yet. There's no, like rock and roll had not become what it would become. You right. know, it was more like suits and ties and everybody is, you know, prim and proper and they're doing more of this, right? Yeah. Uh, Buddy Holly, right? So who the hell you is know. gonna play that thing? <laughs> That's my thought, you know? Very this, strange. This is actually, this is Baxter's SG, but it's, um. This is like an early 70s, I believe. Um, it's not 60s, um, but it's really, it's pretty cool. I don't know, I've had a hankering for an SG for a while now, it hasn't gone away, so. Maybe at some point, when I decide I don't need that one kidney, I'll get a nice, <laughs> a nice custom shop SG. I don't know. I don't feel, I don't know, I feel like you can be happy with a Les Paul that's just a standard at this point. But every time I play one of the SGs, I don't know, there's something I don't connect with about them. But then I, I, I've played the custom shops. It could be in my brain. It could be psychological. I don't know. Um, well, you know, you but, talked to me about that whenever I had that one. And I think it, I think it is. You know, it's a bit like, it's hard to get your, get wrapped around a guitar sometimes, though, you know? I've had that before. So it's just the feel, you know, the, the, the neck. Like, it's not like the neck is longer. It's just out here more. So, I don't know. Some of it is just that. <laughs> I did, I did borrow this. Well, I borrowed yours for a while when yep. you had your standard. I borrowed this one from Baxter for a bit and did, um, did some recording with it. This one's got the tiny little thin neck. Other than that, it's a really good guitar. But yours has that, right? What is yours? Yours is a what? 60... 67. 67 P90s. Yep. In a... You got a little maestro. Yeah, and it's more like a... I don't know. It's hard to explain the neck because it's not like flat, but it's definitely tiny. It's small. Yeah. So interesting neck. I don't have like tiny hands, but it's kind of weird. Todd Roy says he just got a Firebird. They're great. I, the Firebird, I we, we got one. Uh, somebody sent us one to try out that was um, a Baker custom. You know, one of the Baker guitars, but built like a Gibson. Um, Pretty, pretty fun to play, except for the tuning things. I couldn't get the hang of the tuning things being backwards. But I've seen some of your videos, Todd, and they're awesome with the with the Firebird. So, um, yeah, dude, nice, nice guitar on that one. That was that's awesome. Um, but yeah, okay. Frank has a Gibson SG64 reissue. Yeah. Those are a few of the custom shot ones I played that I thought were yeah. the closest to feeling like balanced, and I was like, man, these feel solid, and I could I could play one of these. Um, those are pretty well, pretty you, amazing. I, the one that I had before that was just a standard run, couldn't couldn't fall in love with it, and then having that vintage thing, I was like, Whoa. and then I we played the 64 I, that we had in here. That thing was great. well. When you had the standard one, yeah, I borrowed it because I was thinking about maybe buying it or something, and um, yeah, I just didn't. I don't know, take it to a few rehearsals and things. It didn't didn't do it. Um, yeah. I, J. Ryan, I can kind of relate to that. That's kind of how I felt with the standard one. I don't know why I didn't feel that way with the with the custom shop. But I haven't spent as much time with the custom shops either. I've never, like, borrowed one taken it home. The, I could see this being a guitar I would play. Um, you know, Baxter's funny. Like, he, he doesn't mind, like, zero frets and weird setup so I'd have to do some love to it I think but get some mojo in that other thing. than that you know it's not a bad guitar though that one's good okay casino crew what color makes an SG pop have you seen those ones that are like shell pinkish those are hot <sighs> those are hot, hot man I don't, I'm just a sucker I want my SG to look like this like faded out red yeah. where I can see the wood grain I feel like that's um, like classic that's like their sunburst I mean I something about Gibson's to me I don't want weird colors I just want I mean, I've seen a few, cre like, the cream ones that I'm like, oh, okay, that's yeah. sweet. Some of the Pelham, or uh, Pelham Blue is okay to me, um, but it's got to be the right one. It's got to have almost that faded kind of look to me, um, if it's I, the blue. Or, or, like, the Lake Placid, like, faded. I've seen SGs that are in TV yellow. I could get down with that. That's bad, man. I don't like any of the green ones that much. I know some people love them. It's just not my thing. I could handle. I, I I've like seen a few that are black with the um, tortoise guard. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. That's pretty cool, right? The ebony ones, or whatever. That whole cool. run of that uh, Chicago Music Exchange did with the they had all had the, um, the like t-top pickups and they had the tortoise guards and um, they were in different colors. I thought that was pretty pretty cool looking, you know. But yeah, I'm I'm with I'm with Bert Terry Red. 
that's kind of my that's my top sea foam green sg see i don't know i just don't think i can can't can't get behind a sea foam green i mean it could be kind of cool i would want to see okay it. mike is just kidding thank god i thought maybe <laughs> that was true uh, <laughs> with the jimmy page double neck do you think the original would be the most valuable car guitar on earth nah i don't yeah. think so no because I think Jimmy Page has two other Les Pauls that would be more valuable. I would think, right? I, I don't know. Yeah. It just depends, man. I, I, I mean, sort of. I don't know. Like, it, there's a point in time, and there's going to be a point where we cross a barrier, and it may not be worth. Like, yeah, I don't think it'll go for what it could have went for. You know what I mean? And I think there's a few artists right now that are reaching that point. And it's going to start to go the other way. Well, I mean, I'm really interested to see. Is, is the Jimmy Page... One gonna be fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yes. So, so we know that for sure, right? When do we get to know if it's sold out or not? Oh, don't worry, it's sold out. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> That's what they're gonna say. I, I don't mean, know, you know, would Gibson just be like, yeah, it's sold out no matter what? Probably, maybe, because you can only get it from the Gibson garage. Um, I mean, that's a really cool guitar. Man, that seems hard to buy that guitar for 50, 50 grand. For some reason, it feels seems different than the Greeny. I don't know. That's an odd one. Um, We'll see. We will see. Uh, most valuable guitar, Don Felder's double neck on <laughs> Total California. Um, Hotel California. I like Total um, California. I like Total California as well. I, I, I think that's super cool. Um, we did a video on this. To me, that's maybe a little cooler than... I don't know. Maybe not. My son is obsessed with Hotel California now right away. It's really fun. Um, oh it's his God, favorite thing. I know. It's an all tries to sing like that. <laughs> That's great. Um, but yeah. Oh, Greg McFadden got his Dave Grohl. Great guitar and about the right price, but my... Okay. Okay, good to know. There you go. Um, Very good to know. So. <laughs> Todd says Jimmy did play a Zeppelin riff on each guitar. This is true. Uh, it's just weird. Jerry Garcia's um, Tiger has to be the most valuable if they all went to auction today. Do you agree with that? I don't know. Gilmore's, Gilmore's going to be hard to beat. Yeah. I mean, it really comes down to there are people who are like diehard Jerry Garcia fans. But do they have more money and more <laughs> you know, they want to buy? I, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's going to be. It's hard to know. It's also, I feel like it's a fickle thing as to like when those guitars go to market. Like what's going on in the economy? Like who's looking to invest and buy? Because you know, like inflation. No one like on. any. of I mean, unless you guys are secretly really, really wealthy. Um, if you are, you can message us. <laughs> <laughs> but, Call it, Jonathan but, but but you know, I'm, and I'm talking like stupid money, like pay of three million dollars for guitar money. You know what I mean? Um, I, I don't know. It's just weird. I feel like there's so many factors there. Cool. As to what makes it the most, like, because once you get to that certain point, yeah. like you know Jerry's guitar, any of the Jimmy Page guitars, uh, um, uh, my brain just went what? blank. But yeah, any of those guitars, yeah. I mean, it's just it, it almost gets to an arbitrary point. If I could pose this question to you, any guitar owned by any musician, and it is solely yours to do with whatever you'd like to, what guitar would you say that's the one I'm going to take? Famous, famous guitar. Here's the thing, right? It wouldn't necessarily, I know this is odd, it wouldn't necessarily be my favorite musician because sometimes my favorite musicians don't have guitars that I'm like super That's into. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like I love Joe Walsh. Love Joe Walsh. But I'm probably, his Les Pauls don't always appeal to me because they're 60s, they don't have the necks that I like. Do you know what I mean? And now I like Led Zeppelin and Jimmy Page, but I'm not like crazy fanatic like yeah. Zeppelin head, you know what I mean? So like, I might could pick one of his guitars. Yeah. I I mean, you don't understand how much I love Eric Clapton, but that's that's another thing, right? I, now, would I, I want like Blackie or Brownie? Yes. <laughs> of course you would. But uh, I, on it, okay, May, maybe if I, I had to pick it right now. Yeah. I'd maybe want like Clapton's like the cream, the three thirty five, the the three yeah. the that era, sixty four, yeah. three thirty five. Had to pick some right now. I can, I can, I can see that for you because that's like there was a poster in the shop that you were like, "That's badass," and that's what it is. It's because it is badass. Body. He's got the one uncut string. I mean, that is bad. And I, also, just from a historical fun, I'd like to have it. Like uh, 
there's videos of um, it's blind faith, so it's Clapton, and it's a uh, Telly Custom with a double binding with a strat neck on it yeah. that he did for that gig. How cool would that be? And you know they didn't play that much, right? And they only did the one year and the one album, so you know that'd be kind of badass. Todd Roy says he'd like to have Keith Richards tell it. I mean, that's that would be pretty that'd awesome, be pretty cool. Um, you know, I mean, um, it is a really tricky question because I think of like a you know handful of guitars, and I'm like, oh yeah, that one. Oh wait, no, never mind that one. Because like based on what I like, uh, like a John Frusciante, you know, his '62. That would probably make sense for me, but I, I know, can see that lining up for you. Yeah, I'll tell you the the he plays an Olympic white one that is alleged to have been owned by Jimi Hendrix at some point, and it it has yet to be confirmed or not. But that thing that would be the guitar, mainly you know, based on the way it looks and the way it sounds. I bet if you got your hands on some of the Hendrix guitars, I bet they were garbage. You know what oh, I mean? Just because yeah. it seems yeah. like he didn't really like care. He didn't take great care of yeah. that. You know what I mean? But I mean, I don't know, man. <sighs> To me, it's, it's just odd. I, yeah, and I don't know. You know, once I found out that he swaps all the pickups in his guitars, I was like, "Damn!" And it's like, "Well, what?" You know. And you, you got to figure: is that just for consistency? Is that to make sure they work? Because you're playing in these big stadiums. It's just a lot of weird. Yeah. Who, who knows? Kind of things. Um, I had one in my brain that was, and then I lost it when I was. Uh, we were talking about the Frusciante thing. I'll think of it again in a minute. I mean, okay, well, let's go like Ooh, model by model. Like the Knopfler, like the Knopfler, the red, the red Strat. God, that. would be cool. I could see, yeah, that I could see be, that. That'd you be know? really cool. I think um, let's go model by model, and we don't have to do everything. We'll go until we're like, all right, cool. So Strats, I think we just answered that one, right? That it, it'd be that, or it'd be like for me, it'd be like maybe, maybe like one of Clapton's yeah. vintage Strats, like yeah. like black. I, I'd take the hardtail one that didn't sell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be cool. But no, I mean, it would man. probably be black or brownie, yes. you know. Uh, or, 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 or it'd be that red, the yeah. Knopfler, the, you know. Yes. Uh, all right, so then 335s, we got two. We got you okay. went for that. Just all Clapton's guitar. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, I don't know. Picking a 335 would be hard. Because, they're like, I mean, I want to say somebody like a... Uh, like a BB King kind of situation or something like that, just because of the sound, like the tone. But I also know that's a lot him. <laughs> So, right. I don't know. I mean, I could see. God, I mean, there's a lot of options, right? I mean, if I, yeah, I don't. Know. I could see wanting a Warren Haynes 235. They're I, not necessarily vintage, right? But they're, yeah. well, I mean, they're killer. If it doesn't have. Marcus King 345. Dude, yeah. Those look sick. Those are sick. Um, what about Telecasters? Yeah, that's where it's better to go. It's like, oof. Uh. No, no. I got no. some. So I would, I would. What do you got? Well, there's an obvious answer here. There's Mike Campbell's broadcaster. Oh, that that would be my number one pick. That is a good one. But here's one that you might not think I would think. Andy Summers. Yep. Dude, that's a telly right there. That's a telly. That's a badass telly. Um, um, I mean, in that vein, I'm like, I'm torn between. Damn, dude, I had it in my head too. Uh, the. So it would be something weird, like just for posterity's sake, like a Johnny Greenwood telly would be cool. The one with the stickers on it that we were making fun of the other day. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, also though, like, man, I don't know. Because, like, I'm trying to think of iconic telly tone. That well, like, Whoa. well, do you remember we watched that? There's a live video of Hotel California from, like, 77. And, and Joe Walsh is playing a telly. And Felder is obviously playing the double deck. That's a badass telly that's too. A telly. That's a good. I mean, like, I'd love to have that that one, you know. Um, see, Danny Gatton. Okay, I just don't think I'd want that telly. Plus, Danny Gatton is like not human. You know, he's just so. And he's one of my like heroes. I, like, I really got into him for a while. But <laughs> let me learn this Danny Gatton thing. Yeah, no. Never. There's, there's that. There's this that. Uh, you remember the Hot Licks videos? There's the one with Danny Gatton, and he's like. You know, and I got my little delay pedal that I use for for Dublin. And sometimes, if it if it breaks on a gig, I just play all the notes twice. And he plays the same crazy fast thing twice. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and it sounds the same. And you're like, oh, me too, Danny. Um, me too. But uh, Danny, Danny, that talk about it. God, what a dude. That's some tough stuff. Oh, God, he's so good at everything. But then there's this few times he's playing that Gibson, and I don't really dig the tone as much. It's like, what's a weird tone for him? What I've 
But anyways. Yeah. Um, oh, my Woodrow says, I love the thin line that Johnny Lang used in, early in his career. I, I think that's awesome. I love that telly, the Tab Benoit. I don't know if you guys listen to Tab Benoit mm-hmm. at all. Um, he's got a kill, cool, like thin line with the wide range humbuckers he plays. Stuff's um, magic, dude. Yeah, Bucket wants to play Patelli. Um, yeah. Now, I guess for the, the cream of the crop here, the Les Paul. Who's Les Paul you taking? Maybe I'll take Dwayne's Les Paul. Dwayne Allman. I like that. I For me, it's always been the red eye. Like, I would take a red eye every day of the week. I see that, and it's, it has nothing to do with, like, a Jason Isbell situation. It's more so the look and the sound of that yeah, guitar yeah. is phenomenal. I heard it live, and I was like, whoa. I mean, I mean, you know, that would be a great choice. I think I could live all the, like, SG and Les Paul stuff in the, in the Almond Brothers sort of family. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Dwayne had a killer SG, and then they got the Dickie Betts stuff the playing the killer. I mean, yeah. I, you know. Hell yeah. All that stuff was amazing. But, I mean... I'm trying to think if there's any other sort of Les, Les Paul things. And I mean, you talk about the, the other, the other like sort of 355, 335, 345. You can, like you see some of those uh, old videos of Freddie King playing that junk and you're like, whoa. Yes, bad. Bad, I, oh, what well, a bad man, Freddie King. You know what's really cool, too? It's a scary-looking dude. I bet if you got oh, Freddie King was mad oh, at you. If he got a hold of you, good dude, God. he'd kill you. The, uh, I'll tell you that Hendrix SG that they reissued yeah. a while back, yeah. those looked cool. I was like, oh. right. ate up. I was like, mm, I'd play something like that. I think it was mean. Now, okay, the Brian May Red Special. I feel like that's such a... Specific to him. Yeah. Well, you, you have you I mean? played any of the ones that, like, you can go to guitar centers and Sam Ashes and stuff. You'll see them in there where they have their like brand. I've played a lot of because because before those were a thing, right? Like different people made their version of the Red Special. And I used to know this guy in Charleston who was like, uh, well, he's a sort of an acquaintance, but he loved Brian May and he had this pretty high end one, and it had the fattest neck I've ever. I mean, it was a huge neck. Yeah. Um, they sound cool, right? They're just kind of. That could be the kind of guitar, I think, where if you wanted to be a little weird and you wanted a guitar that did everything, because that was the point of the Red Special, right, is it kind of does yeah. everything. That might be that might be a good choice. I mean, yeah. I, to me, I think it is, like you're saying, it's to him, you know, to, to Brian May so much that I, anytime I've played him, I'm like, oh, it's cool. It's not me by any means. I can't, you know, it doesn't, my brain doesn't click around it. Yeah, you know? Forget that. What now? If you had to pick one crazy weird thing, now that we've talked about the red special, what's the one crazy weird? It could be a Dan Electro, it could be a Guild, it could be whatever, right? Um, I, there was a time where I really, 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 really was less than after like a, an old Guild Starfire. I could see that, but let me let me think for a minute. Let well, me let me I just got, think. I got I'm sure you got one. Pocket. Okay, go ahead. I would love to own one of those. Loose side body, clear uh, aluminum neck, like the aluminum neck actual thing, like the electric guitar company, like kind of stuff, like some Steve Albini weird mess stuff, you know. I I've always loved those, like since I was I can see that. really little. Like I remember drawing pictures of guitars yep. in like a notebook in class instead of taking tests, and that was a guitar that I always thought was cool. And as I grew and learned more about them, I was like, oh, that's badass. I get a handful that I think would be fun like that, like a Cooter Caster. The Rye Cooter, you know what I mean? That would be badass. I would, I think a James Trussart, the metal bodies, I've played a few of those, they're awesome. That maybe is not that weird, but on the super weird, one of those old Vox guitar organ things, the guitar organ. The guitar organ? Or, 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 boom, that would be all of them. One of the electric guitars. Yes. I think those are cool. And that stuff's all over some of that, like the Beatles and the Tom Petty records stuff. I, well, um, I was going to say, know. you and I, with like our Tom Petty love, me and Johnny first kind of bonded over stuff like that. Right. I think we would both take a teardrop. Oh like yeah, from the refugee music video, right. like wow, the Rickenbacker, any of that stuff. And I would take any of any of uh, their Gretches. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, that that might have been some of my first like real Gretch love was seeing seeing some of that stuff on Mike Campbell and, like videos and, and and you know them playing the Gretches on like uh, and I know that he's not actually playing it on this in the studio, but on the video, like uh, one back down, it's he's playing slide on that Gretsch. I'm like, dude. Sometimes that makes it, dude. It's like the it's like the uh, Californication video. I wonder how much that has done for White Falcons. 
Right. You know what I mean? Because that think about that bringing it forward to a whole other generation, like Tom Petty did, where it's yeah, like, hey, yeah. boom. People who weren't necessarily caring much about like the cult, you know what I mean, like Billy yeah. Duffy kind of stuff, or like yeah. the rockabilly kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah. Like, yeah a whole yeah. different sound. I, You're like, Whoa. I just don't know how you can see a falcon, a white falcon, any kind of falcon, and not be like. Damn. Damn. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just don't know. I mean, because, like, like you know, I've got mine that's the Midnight Sapphire, and when I pull that thing out more than any other guitar, and honestly, it's my cheapest guitar, <laughs> which is so dumb. But remember, I only have, like, four electric guitars. But anyways, um, <laughs> but anyways, I pull that thing out, and people are just like, oh, my God. Like, people who don't play guitar always lose their minds over it. Whenever, it's just pretty. Well, whenever I started playing, there was a brief moment where I was like, oh, Gritches are dumb. That's lame. I and remember then, this. I remember when you being like, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Then it came around, and I was like, oh, I get it. I mean, it's, like, it's easy. Cool. I feel like it's easy not to get them. Yeah. There's, they, they, you know, they're weird guitars, but God, they're fun. And they're just, they they really do have a sound. And, you know, sort of like Rick and Rickenbacker kind of things. Yeah. Um, you but know. whenever you get it, and like once you realize too, like I, we all fall into the trap of, well, the guitar is the tone, the fingers are the tone, whatever it is, right? Yeah. I've found whenever I sit down with a guitar and actually like give it a chance as far as my playing goes, I love it almost every time. So I mean, I yeah. A and I just, I don't know. I, I fell in love with Gretsch's pretty early because I just thought, I, well, mine was out of dumbness, out of a misconception. I thought, oh, if I have a big hollow body Gretsch, it'll be like, you know, having an acoustic and electric sort of kind of. And I mean, it's not like that at all. But, you know, that's kind of what I thought. And about to join the cult of no um, acoustics. That's right, baby. I, I've gone acoustic-less for years at a time. Yeah, you know? right. But I also, I went, pretty early on in my playing life, I went, um, this was caused by poverty, I went for almost two years with no electric guitar. And I just sat in my little horrible apartment and played played electric things on my acoustic. Sickening. Um, we'll never let that happen again. Dark <laughs> days. Dark then days. Then I bought a telly. I um, bought a telly again. So, but then after that was when I bought my first, like, nice-ish my high, I was a Highway One Telecaster. I bought. It got me out of that phase. Still but got yeah. it to this day. Plays it every night. <laughs> I traded it for a Gretsch. You whore. <laughs> <laughs> traded for a really crappy Gretsch. That was a bad trade on my part, but it did lead me into the Gretsch Gretsch land. So I, I'm I'm grateful for that. Um, yeah. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I wish I still had my Tennessee Rose. That was a good guitar. That was a really good guitar. Um, but you know. I drug my wife to the border of Alabama and Tennessee to trade trade some men for it. <laughs> Gritches come and go. I feel like that's um, a guitar that comes and goes. Like, that was a guitar I loved so much. And I, I moved to Nashville and I had it. And I find myself never using it, you know what I mean? And I needed, I had a Mexican telly that was okay. Um, and I was in a Telecaster phase. And I just knew I needed like guitars I could travel with and play, like solid body electric guitars, you know? Um, and that you know that was that was what I, I think I bought a Strat and a Tele for what I I sold that guitar to that guy. Um, so what are you gonna do? But no, that was a good one. I'd like to get that one back if I could have that one uh, one cool. some back. That was good. I I now I had a White Falcon before that was one of the center blocks. Yeah, it was a lemon. It was always and that's the that's the thing about Gretsch's and the Pro Series. I think maybe even more than the Electromatics. Yeah, they're amazing ones. And there's some of them, they're just never, they seem like they're just never going to be right. And even the amazing ones, sometimes you got to be able to see through to the amazingness. Because like when I got the Falcon I have now, yeah. I played it and it was like, ah, all right. But I knew, I, I, I luckily, I'm, I'm old and I was like, okay, this can be an amazing guitar. You just had to work for um, it. I had to work. But That's it took awesome. me how long? Months of like, oh, I'd come in and tell Sean, well, yeah. I did this. So it's almost there, you know, it's almost there. And finally I've landed yeah. at a spot where, man, it's really good. Oh, um, but I never landed yeah. there with the last center block white falcon. I love that guitar, it was so cool looking, but um, well, that's the thing too. There. Like you love the look of it, like that's how I thought about that first SG I had. It was like, I loved the way it looked, hated the way the neck felt. I loved the I way tried. that one sounded too. Sounds I mean, it good. sounded great, but you know, and, and my falcon was that way. I loved the way it sounded, but I just couldn't get it. And, and honestly, God, maybe now I could get it there. I don't, I don't know. So I'm, I'm rethinking. Yeah. Maybe now I know a few extra things. Um, but, you know. Mary McCheese is right. People don't realize the range they have. Talking about Gretsch's, they are, they are the, the ACDC backbone. If you've never played Filtertrons 
into like a dirty, gnarly rock and roll like sort of thing. I mean, like you're missing out. It's not a Gibson thing at all. Like it's not like single. It's just its own thing. And man, it just it's not like P90s. It's yeah. this growl, but it's like this weird high fidelity. But you can just like sink into it. I mean, it's yeah. man. I mean, it's it hits really you like good. a ten pound hammer, dude. It's heavy. Like, it's bam. really good. I mean, it's got it's so good. Um, bam. Yeah. Try it. Go try some Filtratrons. Not clean and sparkly and pretty, but like dirty, nasty, gnarly. Yes. Make you happy. Uh, Mayor McCheese asks, what has more bite than a filter? Not many tron? things. Sean's dog does. Better yes. than that. <laughs> Chasing <laughs> my neighbors around the damn neighborhood. Well, little, little ten pound thing. And that's it. That's the only thing. Yeah, it's not. I mean if he caught him, it wouldn't be a big deal. No. <laughs> Just like shake him off their leg. Yeah. But <laughs> Oh, uh, she she couldn't even you know she didn't even terrorizing bite. the children. She'll sit um, there and pick and play with me. She'll get close to my face and she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> I get close and she starts licking you. Steve, Steve we'll says, Steve. we're still in the title. You may oh. Don't you worry. I'm I'm all natural everywhere. That's right. Not the even traveling trimming. Wilburys are great. Me and Johnny love the traveling Wilburys. I, I love the traveling Wilburys so much. I was um, gonna say. It's sort of like all the things we love. Like, you love Bob Dylan. I love, you know, Tom Petty. I mean, Roy Orbison is awesome in there. Oh. Um, well, that's how I got introduced to guys like Roy Orbison. Um, yellow guy. Jeff Lynn. Was, yeah, Jeff Lynn. Um, all those great dudes. And I, I knew I was a huge Bob Dylan fan. I was a huge Tom Petty fan. And, of course, you know who George Harrison is. Who? Yeah, exactly. Who is he? <laughs> Did you know that his, like, album, he, had a, he has an album. Cloud it's Nine. called, like, No Wonderwall something. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I did know that in the back of my brain, but that I was... That was his first solo record. Well, right, and it was yeah. apparently the first album out on Apple Records, and yeah. I came across this because me and one of my students yesterday, actually, it was um, William Baxter's son. Uh. <laughs> we were trying to figure out, we were talking about, like, where Wonderwall comes from, and yeah. so, uh, you know. I, um, whenever I... So I got into Oasis before I got into the Beatles, and then whenever I found out that the first solo Beatles record ever, people like to think like, oh, it was Imagine or whatever. It's like, no, it was it was George Harrison was George. Uh, well before that. Um, yeah, that's right. Wonderwall yeah. music, that's right. That's right. And like I said, I think maybe I knew that. I just never, the, the, the synapses in my brain had never quite connected it. I mean, um, he's, he's one of my, you know, I don't know. He's the quiet beetle. He might be my favorite solo beetle. Is, is he the most underrated beetle? Yeah. Ringo's the most overrated. So <laughs> you damn right. <laughs> no, I mean, you talk to real drummers and they're like, Ringo's amazing. I mean, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. No, he's, I have yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm agnostic uh, on, yeah. on, on Ringo, but. Um, um, I, I feel like George know. Harrison doesn't get the, the credit that he deserves as far as like the music that he put out. Because, like, you know, everybody, you got Wings fans, you got. John Lennon solo stuff that I feel like is almost the top of that mountain for a lot of people, right? And then George Harrison absolutely ate, dude. You listen to that first record that he put out? I say first record, second record that he put out? The, uh, um, what's it called now? All Things Must Pass. That's a killer record. I listen to that thing front to back. I just sit around playing my guitar while my dude, guitar generally was. You want to talk um, about my thoughts on Timothy Chalamet playing Bob Dylan? Severe disappointment. I don't, I don't know why. I just don't want Timothy Chalamet to play Bob Dylan. There's other people. Could have been anybody. Uh, Ned says Pete was the best, the fifth Beatle. You know, there's all that stuff about Bernard Purdy saying that he played on drums on a ton of the Beatles stuff, and that Ringo never played on any of it. I mean, I I'd like to be <laughs> under the sea. <laughs> hey, he played those drums, guys. Come on. And then he wrote Octopus's Garden. Sure he did. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, man. On that note. Let's not get demonetized. Um, oh, yeah. Um, all right. Well, anything else that's pressing for the day? I don't think so. Go listen to some George Harrison. George we'll Martin is such, I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that's true. George Martin, I mean. That's amazing. Time to figure out our lunch plans, boys. That's right. It is. Lunch it is getting, time, is it lunchtime? My God, I could tell. Yeah. 11.38. Man, yeah. we're late today. We got all we got down it. nostalgia, memory lane there in the beginning. Um, I'm feeling like we can go crazy today. Some thick sandwich action. Something nuts. I don't know. Something crazy. 
I want something crazy and not normal Wednesday crazy. Burger King. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it. Yes. If you get Derek on Burger King, it's done. Whopper, it's baby. done. He loves it. He loves it. Mayor McCheese, we are going to talk doors and the who next week. And we're going to, we'll try and figure out. We got, there's been one night a week that we've all secretly been hanging out here and there that we may try and figure out. I would like to figure out a live stream like situation. A live stream from the roof of our Yes. Gym? Well, and maybe we do like some beer and cheers and talk about records I and mean, play music together. Do you then, boys want to hear you know, Derek play the old pedal steel? Make it cry. Make it rip. Man. Make it cry. Outlaw style. It's amazing. I, listen, I'm going to be honest. I'm not saying this because Derek's sitting behind the camera staring at me. I'm saying this because it's true. The last time we jammed, uh, not it was last week. Yep, last Tuesday. And listen, I don't get to hear Derek play pedal steel very much. So like, you know, I knew that he was to the point where he could play like some chords behind it. Last week he sits up. down <laughs> And I'm I'm still like, do we need to play in G? You know? And he's like, no, no, whatever, whatever you want to do. Derek looks at him, play puts on his G sunglasses. Liner, Johnny. <laughs> and then he just starts playing like pedal steel licks. And I'm like, holy, I mean. He ripped a solo at one point. It's dude. I was digging it. He's but, laughing but, back there, but it's true. He is laughing, and he thinks that I'm yeah, busting his balls. He thinks they were blowing But I'm not. No, he I, was I, eating, I, dude. I, was, I told Baxter, I came in the next day, I was like, dude, have you heard Derek play pedal solo? Uh, Richard also went home and listened to that uh, Rustin Kelly Rustin song, Kelly song over 100 times. Like, he knows the part now. He oh, wants really? to play Come on, Mayor McCheese. Yeah. We might Come have on. to do a live recording of that. That would be pretty, pretty good. Cool. Sick. Sick, dude. Rap albums and pedal steel. Yeah, we can talk that too. <laughs> God, God. <laughs> I just love it. God bless. Um, right. All right. We love you all. Humble pie, humble pie. Killer killer guitar music, actually. Um, yeah, humble pie is awesome, actually. My friend Will Sanford would be excited about hearing you talk about humble pie. Oh, Anyways, thank y'all for hanging out with us. That's hit right, like, baby. hit subscribe, hit the bell. See you next time. <laughs>